got this Power Mad handlebar riser block for my Polaris RMK snowmobile that I'm going to be installing today. And there are a couple things you need to know about installing these. They're really easy to install. This is a two inch riser block. The, you can see that one is their measurement inside of here. But a few things to know. If you follow guys like Chris Brandt or Dan from Next Level Riding Clinic or some of those guys, they'll tell you that people often go too tall with the riser blocks. And I chose the two inch block here for a couple of reasons. And I started to open it as you probably want to see what it's like to install this on the phone. They're, they come with the bolts that are the right length to fit this riser block. And that's great, except I did go ahead and buy the correct cap screws that will recess down in the head that I'm going to use instead of these bolts that they supply. And I'll show you why here when we get over to the machine. But also the reason I chose the two inch is I'm 6'4", and two inches is actually plenty to get it in the perfect riding position for me. People that are putting a four, five, six inch riser block on there, that's just extreme. And that's not my opinion. You can go listen to Chris Brandt or Dan or some of those guys, Kyle Pulsifer, talk about people having overly tall handlebars. This actually puts it right into the perfect position to cantilever the machine side to side, but not ridiculously high that they're ape hangers. So let's go start pulling the old clamp off of my handlebars and show you what the install process of this is, as well as the bolts that I'm going to be using, which are these guys here. Because this is the factory one. And I'll show you these recess down in the head where those guys don't, there. And I want to keep that same recess. These are also grade 12.9, they're, they're 12.9 metric bolts. This bolt is a six millimeter by 1.0 by 100 millimeter long shank. So if you're looking for these cap screws, this is called a cap screw. And I actually have ordered some stainless steel ones that when they get here, I will probably swap these out with stainless steel that are the same heavy grade. But I wanted a heavier grade bolt because of the leverage I'm gonna be putting on that since we're making it two inches taller. So you can see exactly the difference you need in that bolt. So let's go take those off and start installing this. Really the best way to remove these is to get a very tight box wrench. So a thin walled box wrench and to get up in that tower housing and get it on there. And then if you can, Loosen it with the Allen wrench on the top. You've got a little bit more movement in there. Or work both sides like you can see me doing here on the video. Once I've got that loose, I'm going to back it out out of the top with the Allen wrench. And that grab handle is just right in the way if you're using a T-handle. I might go get my set of socket Allen wrenches. We're, we're making it. I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to repeat that same thing on all four bolts. Okay, I was able to get all four of those off. It's really hard to video as you do it. You've got a, that really tight angle up in there that the only thing you can get is a good box wrench that's got a, a narrow wall on it like that and get in there to get those four bolts out, the four nuts on the end of those cap head screws. <clears throat> now I'm going to grab the power mad block, put it on here and feed two of those through, and I'll show you what this looks like as I go through the process. One of the reasons I like the two inch riser instead of the three and up is I do have to cut these zip ties but I don't have to lengthen any of the cables to extend it. And so I'm gonna cut these zip ties here to get that off of the angle that they have those adhered to, but we can just reconnect them. In fact, 
I'm going to try and leave these up here, should be able to, as I am moving that down, but that'll give me enough slack to get that two inch riser underneath here without having to extend any of those cables. So feeding these bolts down through there, it's really not rocket science. It fits right in there. You shimmy it around a little bit, but I was able, being careful, to do something that I wasn't sure I was going to be able to do or not. And that was, I kept the bar positioning on the bottom one because this was kind of crimped around the handlebar some. But I can't tell you the difference in the rider profile that this makes from just having that two inch versus the stock one on here. Completely different height. I mean, obviously two inches difference, but I can't tell you how much that two inch change makes as far as the ride and maneuverability of this machine. So I'm gonna keep feeding these down through here and then tighten them up. And uh, I'm gonna look up the torque specification and I'll let you know what I see for that here in just a second. All right, got the bolts all on there and I'm about to torque it down. The torque specification is 14.8 foot pounds per bolt or 20 Newton meters. And you do want to do it in somewhat of a star pattern. So don't just go all ham on one and then the other go crisscross on them, getting them up to that, which 14.8 foot pounds, 20 Newton meters isn't a lot of torque, but don't wrench it clear down on one side as you're tightening these in. Can't really do them hand tight because it's a nylon bolt on the back side of it, a nylon nut on the back side of the bolt. So crisscross it as you're tightening it and then as you're torquing it down to that 14.8 foot pounds. Got those all tightened up, added the zip ties back on both sides. The two inch is just the right amount of length that I've still got a little bit of play in that hydraulic brake line going down in there. It looks tight, it looks tighter than it is. It's not, it's got, it's got plenty of play and I'm not concerned about it rubbing down in here. The, uh, but I'll, I will say it's right at the limit of what I'd wanna do. No way you could fit a three inch and not have to lengthen that that brake hose there, that brake line. The you might be able to loosen that banjo fitting and get a little bit more play out of it, suck it up closer to the handlebar, but it's actually, it's it should be fine. No concerns there. But that's it. it. Really changes the profile of the machine a lot. I should run a tape on there to show you the just the stature difference from the ground. It is two inches taller, but it is more than that in terms of ride height overall because of the positioning, because your steering isn't perfectly vertical. Perfectly vertical would have it coming out to about right here. So it, it sits it back a little bit further. You may have to take your bars up some. This ride position looked perfect to me. We're gonna give it a run tomorrow. Make sure your throttle's not sticking. I mean, that cable's got plenty of play in it. The brakes, make sure it's loose, but turning wise, plenty of room there. And uh, all the electrical cables had plenty of space. You just have to make sure that if you do anything different, you don't impede that brake line but we should be good there. We'll give it a run tomorrow and see how it goes. And that's the PowerMad 2-inch riser block. I'll have a link down in the description for, I got it off of Amazon. It was the cheapest I could find it anywhere. Not expensive at all for what it is. CNC machine, great little product.